guys, welcome back. Uh, so this is the uh, Alaskan style sawmill that I built in one of my videos. I will put a link to it in the cards. Um, but uh, anyway, this uh, little dude has been a faithful little guy. Uh, he did the video where I took all three of the big, bigger hose forma saws and milled with them on that ash log. Uh, I'll put a link to that one up there too. And uh, it's, it's a, been a great mill. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it cost me about 20 bucks to build because most of the materials I already had, I did have to buy a little bit of steel and uh, like the fittings for the oiler and stuff. And I bought a winch for it, but I'm not counting that in 20 bucks. I think it was a $30 winch. But anyway, uh, so it's been a great mill. The problem I have with it is it's heavy. So talking with my friends at Holes Forma, uh, they offered to send me a much lighter mill, still 48 inch. So, let me put this out of the way. And here it is. So, we're gonna open this puppy up, put it together. We're gonna stick the G660 with a 36 inch bore into it. Uh, and that might be all the farther I make it with this video. It's raining today so uh, it seems to be a common thread. Every time I want to do something outside it's freaking raining. I'm so tired of that. But anyway, let's get this guy open. So there it is. All the parts, I hope. <laughs> Got a tool kit. I assume it has everything that can, we need to put it together. Ah, and it comes with a milling chain. I don't know what size that is. Oh, this is a 28 inch, 92 drive length, 3 8 050. Well, I can put a 28 inch in this, and it was nice of them to send me this. I don't think that's normally comes with it, but I'm not positive on that. And I don't know that it's a milling chain. But they were sending me a 28 inch chain, I knew that too. So apparently they stuck it in the same box. Uh, they wanted me to try out some of the new chains that they're carrying. The instructions got kind of logged up in there, but... <laughs> That was kind of a mess. <laughs> ah, nice set of bolts. And then that's it, the wrench. Well, I guess nothing better to do than put it together. I'll bet that's the middle bar. I know that's going on there somewhere. That's the other side of it. Oh, they sent me a 28 inch bar also. You know what? Why don't we go ahead and put this together with a 28 inch bar and this chain. I actually want to see if this is actually a milling chain. Uh, no, this is not a milling chain. Well, then I'm putting my 36 inch bar in it, and we'll test this bar out on another bar and chain out on another saw at a later date. So stay tuned for that one. Okay. Protector for the end. The uprights. And it is has a graduated marks on it too. So that's handy. I'm assuming the other one does. Yes, the other end does too. So this is the head end with the uh, guide, and this is the 
uh, uh, end of the bar throughout here. That's the head end. There's your push handle. There's the other foot. They're both on the same side. Wouldn't you think one would be one way and one the other? But these are both on the same side. There's the clamp for the other. There's a piece that I'm not quite sure what it is. <laughs> there is the upper bar that's going to go through those. The stabilizer, I believe, is called. And that is all the parts. All right. Trash cans on the other side of the room. are necessary. <laughs> now, ideally, this whole thing goes together with this one tool. We'll see how that works out. Okay, a little bit organized. That does appear to fit that. And that. All right, so we know these go here. And they go into this little guy. Like so. And we know the uprights go through that. What if it's a little, uh, there it goes. All right, let's take a look at these instructions and see if we can decipher what it is they intend for us. They don't have a uh, order of operations on here, so... <laughs> okay, so four of these go... So now I know what this is. This is to attach. Oops, let's get a washer on that. This is to attach uh, this bar in between these rails. Okay, not not tight yet. Don't want to do that yet. Then three of these. Sometimes the table's just not big enough. Alright. So now we're going to take this, and it goes on to the middle of the free bolt. tightening this yet is because the handle goes on this also. Okay, and you got well what you've got is a hole that's not big enough for the bolt. There it is. Just big enough.
All right, so now we've got our bar spaced out via this guy. All right, so now we can get these guys set into their places. Castings have little uh, ledges on them that are not letting the bolt slide through very easily. Let's see if we can get a little persuasion here. This was handy. There we go. Now you can get that guy in there. And right now I'm just putting this on far enough to keep the uh, this little guy from falling out. I'm not making it tight. All right, let's see if we can get the other end done. That one go in a lot easier. Of course, I've already had it in once, so probably knock those little ledges off already. Now, like I said, the instructions don't give an order of operations here, but I'm kind of guessing uh, and hoping that I'm correct enough that uh, this will work out. So, Okay, so it's saying that this is going to be the head end. So we'll take this. There we go. So we know that on the head end, it's going to be right at the end of the aluminum uh, extrusions. We know that these little guys are going to go into that. And then this end. Now on this end, we're adding the safety. This is something that my mill did not have. feel much better to have one that has this. Now, this piece is probably going to be something you'll want to set where it's convenient to reach the handle for when you're operating the machine. So you're, let me move this over a little. First, let's get this guy in. All right, let's switch that down. So, handles on this and then you're going to have your saw out here so you want this to where you can reach it comfortably if you have it way out there this is probably not comfortable at least it wouldn't be for me so I'm going to put it about a foot from here I have a fairly long arm span okay so once we're that far along, we're going to start tightening everything up, <clears throat> except for the ones where we need to put the uh, bar into the thing. 
And then we'll go ahead and put, do that too. Actually, I'm going to set my height by the measurements on here. Well, you see, these should be facing this, and I didn't do that right. Okay, so now we're pretty much where we can put the saw in. We will have to uh, adjust this end, no doubt. And I'm going to have to flip that guard around, but the... the uh, Measurements on here are read better off of the top of this uh, little dude right here. So I didn't have that set that way, so I turned it around. Let's flip the guard. That easy. See if we can put the saw in it. Let me slide this down a bit. Get the hatchet out of the way. So you do end up with a few extra parts, washers and uh, one of the screws for the round dude, and one nut, at least in my case. We'll see how that works out if you buy one. And here's the 660. I haven't gotten to sharpen this chain. I will be doing that before I actually take this out the mill with it on a dry day. And I still have the bucking teeth on this, which I really don't need for this particular application, but I'm too lazy to take them off right now, so. <laughs> All right, let's get this close. Actually, let's set it up this way. Now, there are guys that say you have to be completely past the roller tip all the way into here uh, and such, but if you stick it on the rivets that hold the ro roller tip, I have yet to have a problem doing that. So, that is where I am putting it. If you want to put it further in, that's fine by me. I'm not, uh, I'm not your boss. <laughs> This is the way I do it. Take it as you will. All right, so here's one thing I'm seeing already that I, I kind of dislike, is that uh, it comes with a socket style tool, and right now I can really use a wrench. 
to reach under here to tighten these without having to flip it around and have it sliding. But as I wanted to try to do this all with what comes with it, I am determined to try and finish this project this way. Wow, that's tight. I can tell you already this is a lot lighter than the, uh, the one I made. And there we are. So let's uh, do some accuracy testing here. Let me find a tape measure, a ruler or something. Okay, here we go. So over here, to the, yeah, <clears throat> to this bracket, which is actually above this, I have three and three eighths. And down here it's at three and three eighths. Now I have this set to two inches at the top, reading on the top here, which then you can measure out here, since it's the same at both ends. I have two and a quarter. That says two right on it. Now, I'm going to guess that they're compensating for milling. So, meaning after you've cut a slab and you start taking an eighth of an inch off of each side, it's a quarter of an inch less than what it was. So this is marked at two. You cut it at two and a quarter, which is what this is actually set at. And then when you mill each side of it, you end up with two inches. I'm assuming that's what they're, do what they're doing. Uh, but uh, it, it makes sense to me because that's kind of how I work things anyway. I always cut thicker than I intend to use uh, when I'm milling. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a whole lot lighter uh, than my mill was. In fact, I would almost say that this is only about five pounds more with the saw than this is without the saw. Maybe even not that much. Yeah, maybe more like three pounds difference. So, I do not have an oiler for this yet. I am going to get one for it, or probably adapt that one to it. But, uh, yeah, there it is all put together. Looks like it's going to work. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to get a video up soon of using this apparatus to mill a log that I have out there that I have been putting off. I need to do. It's actually a chunk of the same walnut log I milled with the 105. It's a shorter piece. I think it's about five feet long, uh, but it's huge diameter. So uh, actually, <laughs> I hope that this will actually do it. I'll probably take the uh, bumper spikes off and get the extra two inches there. So what, uh, what do I end up with the bumper spikes on? I have 30 inches. So with a 36 inch bar of the bumper spikes on, I end up with a 30 inch cut, which isn't too bad. I'll get 32 out of it when I take the bumper spikes off. 
31 and a half ish. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And like I said, I hope we get it, uh, get you a, a milling video of it up soon, and uh, we'll go from there.